not severe malaria, just regular old malaria. So it's not horrible, horrible. It's still awful, but it's not disgustingly bad. And they have dyes, which I really want. Tobacco, sugar, cotton, coffee, lots of things I really want. They've also got 64.6 thousand peasants already on location. We can just take their stuff, basically. Pretty sure that's how it works, so let's establish an interest in Senegal. And we can think about conquering these other people, too. Hey, we got German national identity. Wonderful. So, Austria became a unification candidate. A unification candidate is a country considered a viable candidate for unification. Conditions for who qualifies varies depending on which unified nation it is. Okay. So we're getting support here. Uh, maybe it's this. So German national identity, the ideals of nationalism and national unification have gained many supporters throughout the German Confederation. They look to the more powerful German powers such as ourselves in the hope that we will champion the cause of German unity on the greater European stage. Momentous times are ahead of us. So it adds the North German Confederation to the Journal of Prussia. And within that journal, it says that the North German minor nations will unify with us if we can become the sole unification candidate. So a German country must have resolved the Schleswig Holstein question journal entry. There can be no unification candidates besides Prussia. How are we chosen as a unification candidate? I suppose we can't just unify them left and right. We'll have to resolve the Schleswig Holstein question first. We do still have this friggin' coup here that's gaining progress as well. The problem is the Junkers are powerful. We might want to just, like, try to suppress the crap out of them, but I think you're powerful if you're above 20% influence or clout or whatever they call it. And their approval of us is less than zero, so we have to make them happier. How is it that they're so capable of launching a coup? I guess it was just like a random event. Anyway, I think in order to resolve this Schleswig Holstein question, we have to conquer the land, right? We have to control part of Schleswig Holstein, and no non German country may own or control a part of the state. So we have to fight them and win. Denmark itself is pretty weak. The issue is who's going to help them out. So Denmark feels. Relations are cordial between them and Great Britain. There's a good good chance that Great Britain is going to want to get involved. If I was to do something crazy like conquer a state on Schleswig Holstein, that'd give us 9.6 .6 infamy, and there's a boatload of people who might decide to go either way. I'm trying to see who all would be involved. So we would be involved, obviously. They would be involved, but nobody is guaranteed to be on either side. I do apparently have an obligation with the French Republic that I did not know about, so I could actually probably keep them out. I wonder if I could maybe even convince them to join us if, say, Great Britain joined. Well, I don't think that now is the best time. Yeah, because Austria could get involved. I'd rather be able to take Austria in a fight. So now, a bunch of them supporting Prussia as a unification candidate for Germany. But I don't understand how you remove the Austrians as a candidate. Maybe we could just humiliate them or something. You know, they have Lion infantry right now. We actually have Skirmish infantry. You know, we have 25 offense, 35 defense per Skirmish infantry. They have 20 offense, 25 defense. So we're slightly better. Slightly better. I wonder if we push the issue of Holstein, if the Austrians get involved. I'm really not a fan of the idea that now is the time to push. We've only got 125 battalions, even if they are all skirmish infantry or pretty good troops. That doesn't beat 191, I don't think, unless we do a hardcore defense, grind them down into, like, meat, and then push them, which is, honestly, I think it's usually what I end up doing in most like straight up conflicts. I'd rather just address the problem directly if I can get aware of it. But to do that, I want to build more troops, absolutely. And I want a bigger economy, so I'm gonna wait. I don't think that we have the military strength to take on Austria directly. So our Senegal interest activated. Can we do establishing colonies? Yes, we can. 
So how does this work? So you need the colonial affairs institution, right? So you spend money on the colony by having colonial affairs. And I think that is what generates your growth, right? I think so, yeah. We could go up to a higher institution for colonial affairs, but we can't quite afford the bureaucracy, so that's something to consider building. In fact, that's something that I think I would really prefer to get built. So before I place the colony, I want to go ahead and put down another government administration. Let's go ahead and let's build it in... Prussia is actually the cheapest location to build it. That is because it does have paper here. Ah, yes, wonderful. Let's go ahead and let's build a government administration here. Let's build two, actually, so we have a bit of a buffer. Back to what colonies we want to start here. They're all afflicted with malaria. Some of them also have the Sahil, which lowers their agriculture and plantation throughput, but does increase ranch, ranch throughput. One of them has Cape Vert, which is plus 15 naval base max level and plus 3 port max level. Senegal is where that is, that is also being colonized by the French. There's also Guinea, which has the Niger River. I think I like the idea of Guinea the most, so let's go with that one. 637 days, good lord. Is that even worth it? Under if that'll increase if we build a port here. And uh, it's based on colonial growth generated, so it's percent multiplied by a million people, which is then split between one colony, and then the malaria, of course, screws us over. Man, colonizing Africa is tough, as it should be. Mm -hmm -hmm. I, I don't know if there's like an easy way to see all potential colonizable locations at once. I think everything else has like severe malaria unless we want to go in South America. And if we go in South America, I don't know if the United States is going to be like, hey, you can't be doing that. What if we colonize New Zealand? That'd be silly. Yeah, they don't have anything to act. They don't have access to anything particularly outstanding except some gold. And that's also like really far away from us. I think we're fine. We may not grow very large, but we've got some infrastructure here. We've got a very small population. We can get something out of here. And I want my dyes, so we're going to probably go with dyes. But first, we need to get them properly connected to us. I do believe it is saying that, yeah, Persian Guinea is isolated, so they need a port. I'll actually put that on top of the queue to get that done first. I always want to make sure that my places are connected to each other. After the port, we're going to build probably two dye plantations, and I doubt we'll be able to fully staff that dye plantation. We've got the event Crowded Streets. Protests supported by the intelligentsia have flooded the streets of Brandenburg, condemning the presence of groups within the government that support autocracy. So we can get the coup is progress, we will retreat by 15%. We, they have taken a position at the floor of justice. We get less authority, less legitimacy, but the intelligentsia, they get an interest group, political strength. Sounds good to me. Or we can say that the intelligentsia are riotous morris of base humanity. 5% of lower strata pops in Brandenburg become more radical. Either way, these dudes get the interest group political strength. And I'm not a big fan of losing more authority. So let's just say some things about them and pretend that we hate them for now. But in reality, we much prefer them. The friggin' British dude, they keep taking our iron. Stop taking my iron. And we have another event, Critical Support. A group representing the usual opposition forces of the intelligentsia has approached the government to propose cooperation against forces that would subvert the government in Prussia. So we can accept their well wishes for now. We get, wow, even more interest group political strength. They are happier as a result, and the coup's progress, oh wait, Dude, if I selected a wrong option that didn't have crew progress retreating, then, uh, whatever. <laughs> let's keep on going here. Yeah, let's have the crew progress retreat by 15%. I'd rather do that. Thank you very much. I have no interest in getting crewed. Making the intelligence here even stronger is wonderful. I wonder if we somehow, like, swapped a democracy. Would that get rid of the junkers entirely? And it says it'll complete if they're powerful. We have to reduce their power enough 
but they can't do it anymore, or we just have to make them happier. They're currently at minus 13.8, being pissed off because of the failed petition. That'll tick down over time. I'm not sure how long exactly, though. Yeah, I don't think there's anything that we can do with our laws at this point in time that doesn't risk radicalizing the Junkers, so it's best not to do that. And I don't want to do anything to make them happier, because everything that they want is worse. <laughs> We could maybe have in a home, a home affairs. People do not want this though at the same time. The National Guard would allow us to mobilize more battalions, like conscript more people. That must be what it is. Having, having some conscripts just in case, it's not a bad thing, but that does take them away from the economy. We'd go up to secret police. I'm not too worried about that. We're not concerned about any coups or burning downs of buildings. Nothing like that's going to happen. We have the enemy's enemy. The Junkers support and the diplomatic corps have offered to reach out to the British government support in their bid for power in return for certain, certain future obligations. So upon the success of the coup, an obligation will be owed to Great Britain. Uh, or we can say, when has British meddling ever gone well? And then the Junkers get more interest group political strength i do not want to advance the coup i guess i'll take them getting some more strength that's fine and ammunition all of a sudden got really expensive in our market there's a lot more no i guess it's been expensive right it was up to like 180 yeah it was at 180 for a moment but now it's back down to like 113 120 ish we have a shot in the dark a prominent functionary and supporter of the industrialist has been shot in broad daylight on the streets of brandenburg the local police seem uninterested in investigating any further. Well then, we could get justice must be done. We have minus 5% bureaucracy, authority, and legitimacy for two years. Coup's progress retreats by 15%, which I would prefer. And the industrialists are happier. Alternatively, coup progress advances. Nah, justice has to be done, so we're going to lose some bureaucracy, lose some authority. We'll have to cancel one of our other decrees now. Low being at 9% is not that many more radicals from standard of living decreases. And the opposition don't hate us that much. So I'm going to leave it where it is. Let's double check that it, uh, yeah, the math is correct, alright? Just wanted to be sure that that little tooltip didn't get stuck in some kind of like mathematical step. We have fear amongst investors. With concerns about national stability and Prussian spreading. Investors affiliated with the industrialists have threatened to withdraw their investments from several factories in Brandenburg. Really? So we can either appease them by getting plus 50% loan interest rates, so we don't want to go into the negative on loans if possible, but the coup's progress would retreat by 10%. Or coup's progress advances and food industries get kind of screwed, well, majorly screwed over. I guess we'll accept a rate increase and just not go into the negatives, because that's pretty expensive. Unless it's like 15% of 8%. Lubeck now supports us as a unification candidate for Germany. I really do not understand, man. Like, we can't do it peacefully, right? We have to beat Prussia, beat Austria somehow. We have a defensive pact offer from Hanover. Absolutely not. We're not going to accept that whatsoever. That makes no sense to me. We got ourselves the water tube boiler. So now we can get that condensing engine pump for our mines. Hopefully be increasing our production. Uh, yes, that's the third step, actually. Very cool, very cool. So we're, of course, going to increase our coal production no matter what. Let's take a look at the iron price at the moment. We would produce 600 more iron. Good lord. Iron right now, there's actually an excess production of 106. And that's with 230 units being taken by trade routes. That's pretty good. I'm not sure that we need to produce more iron at the moment. But if they can do it without becoming unprofitable, we might as well. They say they can do it, so we should do it. Toll consumption won't go up that much. And we need more coal demand anyway, so screw it. Now lead is a different story. Now lead would be a negative, so we're not going to upgrade them. Sulfur would get positive, however. So let's do that. Alrighty, we can do water tube boilers and furniture manufacturers to lower our number of laborers. However, I think that's not a good thing. We don't have a population crunch. We don't have like raising 
wages as a result of not having enough laborers available. So our wages should be pretty steady. Might want to switch to gas streetlights on no minus 1.02 thousand pounds. Services are just too damn cheap right now. Or just unwanted in general. What do we research next? Almost certainly it's going to be... Actually, it could be crystal glass, but we don't need that much glass. Yeah, it makes more glass, but we don't... There's just not that much demand for glass. Although if, if we go to fractional distillation, I think that would increase our demand for glass. Because pot stills does not use glass, but patent stills... That does use glass. Let me double check that pot stills does not. That does not. Is patent stills does okay. And our glass itself is used in food industry, urban center, construction sectors. There's just not enough demand for it, man. We could go canneries. That would take us 16 months, so a year and three months, um, four months, so a third of a year. We could do something like dynamite, but that would take four years. We do also have things like baking powder to go after to increase our grocery production, but we do need to in, uh, increase our sugar production as well. Actually, it's pretty cheap at the moment, so we could definitely do with getting to baked powder, baking powder, or we could go to mechanized workshops for upgrading our textile mills by going through canneries. Let's look at what's more expensive. Clothing? Well, this has a lot of bonuses, actually. Let's go canneries, probably into mechanized workshops. What? The French and British have ended their rivalry, and the Spanish and Dutch have ended their rivalry. Well, Y'all actually chill with one another. No, nah, well, you're cold. You don't hate each other. That's weird. Very weird. All right, this failed petition is ticking down pretty steadily. As long as I can keep pushing back the queue, the coup, I think we'll be okay. We might need to do like one thing or pretend to do one thing like an act of law just to make them happy temporarily so it ticks down. But that's like a, a last resort kind of thing in my opinion. Now I'm actually going to go ahead and build even more government administrations in West Prussia because we lost some bureaucracy from a variety of things. Right now we're building enough government administration to get us 130 more, so that would put us at about 180. To upgrade the colonial affairs, we have to get 142, so that leaves us with 40 in the bank. I want more than that, so I'm going to go ahead and build two more government administrations, because why not? I'd like to have some buffer. Now we do have, actually nothing is particularly expensive at the moment. Everything is being very well taken care of, or is quite cheap actually. So we're doing very wonderful. Wood though is pretty expensive. Maybe I could just import some from the Russians. Yeah, let's do that. Let's get some wood imported that'll lower our construction costs. It'll help Russia out, but we need them for now. After that is furniture, but we're working towards increasing our furniture production naturally. So I'm not going to do trade routes for that. I wouldn't ever mind getting cheaper paper if I can get cheaper paper, but it looks like we're the best. That's too bad. Yeah, I don't think there's much else that we would want to do other than maybe sell some stuff. Holy crap, we produce a lot of small arms. Don't tell me. Don't tell me the private industry has been expanding my small arms and I'm subsidizing them. Okay, I'm not. Okay. All right. So they did not do that. I do think that we have to subsidize the military industry, right? The shipyard? We don't actually, okay. Yeah, I really actually don't want to be like subsidizing anything ever. If I can get away with it. Like railways are included in that. These dudes are having trouble making money though, which is weird. Transportation is just not that expensive where they're at. Okay, okay. So Rhineland. Victoria 3 has like this thing of, uh, you can go down rabbit holes of addressing problems. Like you go down the list of the markets and you just kind of pick out, all right, what do I want to fix here? How do I fix it? And it's very interesting. There aren't any mines or logging camps here to make use of transportation, so that is just too bad. I'm not sure that we can increase the demand for transportation naturally then. So we'll just go ahead and continue subsidizing it. We have do a promotion. The evangelical church demand the promotion of Brigadier General Hakim Anger 
touting his history of loyal and effective service. Uh, if we do this, he becomes a major general, they're happier. If we don't do it, he becomes less popular. They become more unhappy, but not so unhappy that they reduce our education and access. Uh, Hakim Anger is not a bad soldier. Yeah, let's take it. I don't care. Make it less likely for them to lower our education access. Thank you very much. We're getting a bunch of import routes for iron. They want our cheap iron. To, we have 128 days left here to grab some more land. Uh, we haven't even gotten to the dye plantations yet. Gotcha. Almost there, though. The United States of America started a return state diplomatic play against Mexico. It is 1845. Let's actually take a look at that. We cannot get involved, unfortunately. I wish I could... Oh, it's all the way up here. We can get involved. Really? Nah, we can't. They, they picked uh, the Pacific side. So very few people even have the option. It's uh, just Great Britain, Russia, and Hudson Bay Company that can decide. That's too bad. I'm interested to see how Mexico performs against the United States of America. When I play Mexico, I win the war. I don't know how, but that was before point, uh, 1.5. So they, I'm wondering if they're going to get crushed or not. Americans and Russians have declared each other rivals. Okay, that's fine. Let's actually remove the decree in Silesia for the infrastructure. Something that... Ah, oh, we didn't have it already. Okay then, never mind. I do want to keep these manufacturing hubs though. That's making us quite a bit of extra money. Alternatively, we could get extra money by removing the decrees and then getting another tax. Eh, I think we're fine. We could push taxes higher. That would lower our legitimacy even further, but that would reduce the attraction of interest groups in government. We kind of care about the attraction of the industrialists, but not anybody else. But that wouldn't be enough to crush them below 20%. We could sustain that tax rate. That would allow me to build faster, so... But that does make my people's standard of living drop. Which makes them unhappy. And, of course, makes them radicalize. I think the meta is still tax as much as you can build your construction engine up and then go from there, which is probably the truth. You know, it's not that much of an income tax rate increase. It's 2.5% more. Let's do it. Let's get some extra money on hand, and let's actually increase our demand for construction goods. But the best place to do it is the North Rhine. Do I want the North Rhine doing anything else? They got coal. I'd rather them do coal. But well, they have coal and iron, so they do steel, which means that the construction sector does make a lot of sense here, actually. Sounds good to me. You can support. If I do all the budget into construction, about six offices. So let's do one, two, three, four, five, six. And then we're also going to build a railway in the North Rhine. We'll build those after our government administrations and our dire plantations, but we'll get the construction sectors rolling next. That should boost up our demand for iron significantly. Considering I think it's still pretty damn cheap, even with the trade routes. Nope, it's actually at almost perfect. Steel is a little bit cheap though, that could do some boosting. Once we get steel frame buildings, we'll be increasing our steel demand through the roof. But that's going to take five years at the moment. I think that timer decreases as the ages advance. Could be wrong though. It could be wrong. We have two events. We have the informant. One of Karl Heinrich von Weilig und Latum's assistants has fallen out of the window of a government administration in West Prussia and been severely impact, injured on impact. He's offered the government information in exchange for safety. Uh, yeah, I think... Yeah, we want to push the coup back further. We're actually not able to keep the Junkers happy enough before the coup would finish, most likely, so we need to think about making them happy temporarily. Their clout is decreasing, though. So Ludwig Maroslavsky has issued a condemnation of the Prussian electoral system. He's an agitator who wants universal suffrage. He endorses abstention from voting in what he calls a sham, put on to placate the masses. 
the people. So we can lose legitimacy. 2% of petit bourgeoisie members become more radical. This is part of an election, gotcha. That loses momentum for the Progress Party, gains momentum for conservatives. Eh. We can say that discrediting the system is the next step towards revolution. Less, polit less political strength per vote. I'm not sure that's smart. Or their supporters aren't voting. Ours certainly are. So no matter what, this hurts the Progress Party. And it makes the Conservative Party, Free Conservative Party, stronger. Oh, it's different which one it is. Gotcha, I see. So number one is 10% momentum for Conservatives. Below that is Free Conservatives. I'd rather have this one right here. Increasing the industrialists. So we'll do that. Hey, the Junkers stopped being so pissed off all of a sudden. Cool, maybe the coup will actually go away. Yeah, it's expected to lose progress. Very good. Fruitful endorsements. I think this is a... Yep, it's an election event. In a gesture of solidarity with the Progress Party, George Least has encouraged his supporters to vote for it in the ongoing election. So he has our thanks, certainly. 30% momentum added to progress. Or 20% momentum added to progress. And Intelligentsia get... 15% more interest group attraction. I'd like to do that, actually. Then I'll make them stronger over the next five years. Anyway, we've got a boatload more construction points so we can queue more stuff. Let's take a look at our infrastructure situation here. North Orion is actually infrastructure balanced just perfectly. So it's a good thing we're getting a railway built there soon. Everywhere else is doing pretty great in terms of infrastructure, so we don't have to worry about that as we build. We could maybe use another motor industry to supply engines, so let's get that slotted in. We'll go ahead and build that. North Rhine actually has the best market for it, but it is of course right next to the French. I could build it, build it in the Roar Valley. I think this whole thing is the Roar Valley. I just know the name of it from the Civilization VI. <laughs> I think Roar Valley is a decent choice because I do believe that they have a steel mill on site. Yes, they do. As well as coal and iron directly. All right, building that motor industry will provide 40 engines, which is pretty much as much as we need. After that is furniture. We are working towards getting better production methods for furniture, but logs are pretty damn expensive, but so is paper. I think we want to do a round of logging camp construction and let's get these spread out like all over the place none of them particularly concentrated in any one particular area unless we have like construction sectors there so in westphalia let's get three there and these only use one infrastructure i'd kind of like to build these all over the damn place actually like two in every single state except for our colonies of course and we shall go with that because that will keep us satisfied for about 46 weeks of gameplay. And elections are in. Conservatives 167, Progress 24, Free Conservative 8.7. What are our options? Our options are pretty trash. We cannot get the Progress Party into control at all. So we have to pretty much stay exactly where we're at with the Free Conservatives having snuck in as the only voice of reason to the other three. That is just too bad. We need the Junkers to keep losing power. I'm going to go ahead and dismiss this. Wolfgang von Smid. Von Smid has been sent into exile by Luxembourg. What is up with you? Now we do have both of our agitator slots filled. One of them, well both of them. I do want the Universal Suffrage guy to stick around. We can't do it yet, but I'd like to do it one day. Maybe he, he, maybe he can do it one day. But the National Militia dude, uh, how do the rural folk feel about us at the moment? Minus 6, they already have the minus 10% technology spread, but I don't care that much about that. So sir, you are going to get fired. Okay, so it doesn't affect their approval of us, the rural folk, but it does affect the amount of radicals generated. Okay, that's fine. Goodbye. All right, so Wolfgang von Smith would join the movement to enact universal suffrage. I don't care very much about that. Is there anybody here? Free trade, 
is not something I want. No, thank you. I mean, free trade kind of makes sense if you're so like overwhelmingly powerful that you just have to throw your goods all over the planet, basically. That's probably a decent argument for free trade, but we're not there yet. There's still like nothing we can do in terms of laws, really. Like we could do social security, but I'm not going to do that at the moment.